Seven players are through, one more to go. Which one is it going to be? That's what we're here to find out. The last game of the round of 16 at the opening week here live from the ESL studios in Burbank, California. Just a couple of days left until we make the travel over to BlizzCon itself happening this coming up weekend. Joining me on the couch, T to the L to the O. Hello, TLO. And of course, our dear friend in control and my colleague and buddy and gym friend sometimes, Todd. Hello. Welcome to the couch. Thank you. You enjoying your day so far? I yeah, especially so. that last year is getting it right. What all of you guys were wrong is uh, yes, something yes. that's never happened before. So usually I like it. Yeah. yeah. And you, you started to, to, to tie up the predictions a little bit. You're not quite there yet, but you are leaving Trover in the dust. Let's say that he's down <laughs> at the bottom. And unfortunately, he's probably going to stick there. Uh, we'll, we'll catch up with the predictions in a little bit, but we can go to the brackets. As I mentioned, we already have one game left. And we've had seven players that have gone through now to the quarterfinals. And it's shaping up Protossy at the moment with two Protoss mirrors. But the players that we have there and the quality is unbelievable. It's actually insane. Yeah, I mean, the round of eight of BlizzCon is always going to be sick. But I think this year it's even better than, than the last time. Wouldn't you agree, Chef? I think this year's BlizzCon is way better than last year's BlizzCon. Yeah. And what about the year before that? That one was pretty good too, actually. That was a really good one as well. Oh, something, you only said that because Jadon was yeah, there. Yeah, I can't remember. What, what's that? You only said that because Jadon was there. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> if Jadon had been in this bracket, bit of the round of eight, this would have been the best BlizzCon ever, yeah. Uh, if if Jadon was in the finals, it would be the best BlizzCon ever. It's no, I'm just saying, it's great is, BlizzCon. Though. Good competition. We uh, we start off a little bit on the heavy 3-0 side, but now we've had all the a lot of the series going to game five. A couple of upsets, but not too many upsets. You don't want too many upsets. You want the, a lot of those big names up there. Yep. So it's been good. And it's uh, good to see some WCS representation go through to the quarterfinals. We had three players mm -hmm. from the WCS. Of course, all of us working day in, day out almost on the WCS. It's Hydra of all three, Lilbo and Pulp. Would Hydra have been the one, if there was going to be one go through, would he have been the one for you, Todd? I mean, I think so, yeah. From I mean, who, he did go through, through and the like... others did not, but <laughs> do you think he deserves it, Todd? Uh, I thought Hydra and Pulse uh, had a pretty good chance, more so than Lilbo. Uh, uh -huh. Pulse, sadly, barely did not make it. That was pretty close. Yeah. Could have yeah. just been in there as well uh, as yeah. Hydra. All right. Uh, well, the next game coming up is going to be Maru versus Rogue. And we're all excited for this one. I do want to get your thoughts, especially you, TLO, uh, coming into this one, because Rogue is a sexy boy. He's a creative boy. And I want to hear all your thoughts about that in a moment. But we do have the thoughts of the players first. Oh, 그 군단 숙주가 연습 때 아예 못 이기고 정말 힘들게 준비했던 거라서 이기고 나니까 너무 뿌듯했어요. 프로 리그에서 이신영 선수랑 데드윙 경기가 네, 제가 유리했는데 계속 공격하다가 불리해졌는데 한방 전투로 이겨가지고 그게 제일 기억에 남는 거 같아요. 성주는 귀엽지만 의외로 경쟁 이런 생각은 많이 하는 것 같아요. 딱히 없네. 그래도 이번에도 올라온 만큼 꼭 우승하고 싶고 저는 준비를 거의 안 했어요. 그냥 기본기로 하려고 왔어요. 기본기 대결일 것 같아요. 제가 이번에 블리지컨을 예상한 시나리오는 제가 우선 성주를 이겨, 이기고 중혁이를 이기고 4강에서 최성 선수를 이기고 레싱에서 이신영 선수를 만나서 제가 사태라는 종족으로 이기려고 생각 중입니다. 너무 도발하면 미안한데 해외 대 나갈 때마다 지시는 것 같은데 왜 시나리오 쓰고 왔는지 모르겠어요. 성주야 저번에는 너가 이겼으니까 이번엔 또 감정 안 상하고 하기로 했으니까 이번엔 형이 이게 좀 해줘 부탁해. 경렬이 형이 인기가 많아지든 말든 저랑은 상관이 없어서. 
GSL에서도 제가 이겼으니까 그냥 여기서도 제가 이기겠습니다. 형 미안해요. Two fantastic players, and I want to jump straight into Maru. There's Oh, wow. Something very special about this guy, and it's not just as a Terran player, but it's as a StarCraft 2 player. He's changed matchups in the past, and when he's on form and when he's playing well, he is one of the best in the world. A lot of people call him one of the most talented players. Uh, certainly, I guess he's now 18 years old, but we've been talking <laughs> about how young he is for years. He's been around the pro gaming scene for a while now, and he's got the results to kind of back it up. So he definitely is the, is the bigger name in... in Again, a lot of people are kind of, he, a little bit of life in him in the sense that his highs are really high. They're like, yeah. oh, wow, you're the best Terran. Yeah. Uh, and then his lows are kind of like, what were you thinking? What, what were you thinking there? So it's kind of like, which one showed the BlizzCon? Because this guy is kind of one of the sleepers to actually be a threat to win it. Or round of 16, round of 8, maybe. Oh, I mean, thinking back to previous BlizzCon tournaments, previous Global Finals tournaments, remember that first person VOD that came out from Mario against Jade on the one that everyone was like, I don't even know that's possible to, to do that and play that and micro like that. That's what he is capable of, right? I mean, Teal, yeah, you, you saw it. I, mean, I can imagine from your side of things, that's like, oh, oh, oh that's kind of scary to look at. Uh, I mean, that's. Uh, I think that's why also he has such high highs, but also when he's not as good, it, it doesn't quite work out because like life is such a control heavy player. So he's able to make plays happen that should actually not be possible humanly, but they, they are not human when they play like that. <laughs> And um, but when it comes to strategy and refinement, sometimes they lack a little bit. So um, I think it's going to be quite serious. It's going to be a little bit pr like brawl versus trains. I feel like Rogue talked about it in the interview himself that he tried to prepare for the matchup really heavily, yeah. and Mara was like, "Well, I'm just gonna just gonna play and just gonna play better than him." And uh, I feel all Mara is pretty heavily favored if he has his good day here, but I, I think he looks pretty pretty confident. Bit of a bit of a different story with Rogue in, in terms of result-wise. I mean, you, you've seen Mara get to finals before, you see him do yeah. incredibly well, but Rogue has never ever gotten to that level, and he's always been, well, he said it in his own interviews, five times top eight, which is, which is massive. This is the round of 16, though. What does that mean? Is he <laughs> supposed to advance and then lose the next round? Because surely that's yeah. what happens. He makes it to round of eight, loses, Whoever beats him is doomed. They will not win the tournament. <laughs> so if if we're superstitious here, we start getting all paranoid and think that Rogue's gonna beat Maru. But this really feels like Maru is a player of the caliber that I don't think Rogue should be able to beat in a tournament this important. You know, yeah. Maru even mentioned yeah. himself uh, that I think even though he felt sorry about BMing his teammate a little bit, mm. that Rogue hasn't been performing in uh, overseas tournaments. Yeah, I'm excited for the level of this match because I actually like that. I kind of like looking at that stat where it says his best finish is top eight five times in GSL. What that tells me too, though, is that this is a guy who in Korea, exclusively against the absolute best, still performs very well. But what that also tells me is it's about the round of eight that you usually hit that brick wall of a guy that is actually a threat to win the tournament. Well, well we would get somebody like Maru. Usually exactly, yeah. that's my point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. No disagreeing there, Dario. No, basically the round of 16 in Pliscon is kind of like a round of 8 or 4 in GSL, so... Yeah, I think he's getting tired. Dario, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. He's finding it hard Dario to disagree. Dario and I are hitting our stride. <laughs> really? the, uh, Moonlight Madness, though, we've seen this actually quite a few times, which is really nice. I think this is a, a bit more of the exotic map. There is those back rocks, which in ZVT in particular can be pretty easily knocked down, actually. Like, you can scout it, that's fine, but they'll knock it down for later harass, and that's something yeah. to kind of keep your mind on, because it really ups the tempo of the game. Paul, the matchup's so close in stats. Like, is this for real? Like, this is, like, the stats are gathered from every single you event them that yourself. gave WCS what points. A balanced game we You made them here. yourself. Yeah, I, I input them myself. I thought, well, let's add a couple over here and a couple <laughs> over there. Sprinkled them, made them look really, really nice and even. As you When Sean's not hosting, he's also doing data input for ES <laughs> WCS. <laughs> Yeah, I do some camera Man, work so every now and then. Uh, that actually explains things. quite a lot. <laughs> no, but why, I, I think why, uh, why your stats aren't that good. I'm sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> this is a great series to end on. I like that we took a look at Man Moon Knight Madness. Excuse me, it's going to be a cool map to open up with. Uh, I don't want. I, I kind of almost want to shy away from the analysis of like, well, Rogue's that underdog, so G Welkers, he should really mix it up because. Each time we've done that, only Todd's been right so far, and frankly, mm. I'm kind of tired of it. So, uh, I, I, I I'm excited to see the muscle of Rogue against. Well, no, excuse me, the muscle of Maru against kind of the brain of Rogue. He knows he has to prepare something different. 
And yeah. Morrow, as long as his hands just do not do betray not him, betray him. <laughs> do not betray him. They have to be on his side. If they're on, if his hands have allied, aligned themselves to him, he's in good shape. But if they've gone over to Rogue, it is over it's before tough. it even begins. When his hands are on Rogue's side, it's a hard <laughs> series. <laughs> there is actually series. a very interesting dynamic around both of these guys stylistically because not too long ago, when Mech was like everybody's talk and was doing really well, Rogue was one of the very few guys to actually put up a very good fight against Mech and trying very different stuff every single time he faced Mech. So now Maru, I mean, he, he talked about how uh, sometimes, you know, with his wrists and all, he likes to play Mech a little bit more than Bio. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if he will actually try to go hmm. for Mech more than Bio so, yeah. or even if he pulls it out one single time. Yeah, because to me, he's a player that shines most when he plays Bio, in my opinion. Yeah, he should he should be looking to stick to that, ideally, right? I so. hope he doesn't fall by the, the trap that Dream did, which is to really get kind of weird and then lose. Well, we'll, uh, we'll find out. Let's have a look at your predictions and see where you've decided to put your faith in, Todd, because you are did not you just do you, wrong, I suppose, Todd? but um, did here we do have... Did you do it? Clean no. sweep, boys. No pick tomorrow. Oh, wow. All the way across. All Maru. Um, I'm not sure, actually. I can't remember if anyone did say Rogue. I think there might have been a hipster pick by someone like Ross. Well, maybe Chopra. Or something. Maybe While Chopra. you're hashtagging WCS and putting your own votes in there, ask Artosis on Twitter as well who he voted for because that player is most certainly cursed to lose this series. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, he is He is watching. Um, <laughs> we'll see which way this goes, but the, the, the casters and the, and the couch people over here have gone very heavily in favor of Marin. It seems to be that way. He's the favorite. Um, he is. Heavy He's the favorite. Heavy favorite. It's a safe uh, pick. Terry, you talked a little bit about how these you know two players are going to have a bit of a clash in terms of the way they play. You want to go into a little bit more depth on that? I know the play is not quite ready yet. Yeah. You, you said that... Go deeper. Well, I mean, in the end, I think Maru is going to stick to a very standard style. As, as he's okay. saying about the hands betraying himself, I mean, you're making fun of it, kind of, but it really tells you about the mindset he has as a player. i just going to play standard, but I'm going to control the units in a way nobody yeah. else can control that way. So I don't see any reason why he should deviate from that. But Rogue is probably going to try to hit some timings and um, try to prevent Maru from actually getting a uh, reasonable amount of army that he then can control. So Rogue needs to find a way where he just has more units in him and can just kind of A-move and win because he picked a strategy that just snowballs hard enough before Maru can do anything about it. All right, uh, on a scale from 1 to TLO, with Cats being a 5, TLO being a 10, how creative are they going to get this time? Well, Rogue is, is going to go for a hard 8. Boom. And Maru? Maru is just going to be um, sticking to his hands. And well, what's uh, your hard aid, though? Nidus's? Hard aid is something I'm not sure I can entirely um, his explain to you. It's too much okay. right yeah. now. Got it. It's too much. All right, final yeah. question for you. Very fast question. Have your hands ever betrayed you? Yeah, definitely. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Time to go <laughs> to the last game of the round of 16, the last game here before we have our final eight that will make it to BlizzCon. One last player to join the top eight at BlizzCon, Kev. You know, I, many Terran players have had their hands betray them. That's why TLO <laughs> ditched us. But uh, is, can Maru do it? Is it is it actually a legit concern here? <laughs> no, I'm not sure. <laughs> we should really be worried if his hands betray him or not. But I do think yeah. he can do it. For me, Maru is the favorite as well. But I think this is going to be one hell of a series. It's been a great day of StarCraft, Nate. We did seven best of fives already. Oh, oh. This is going to be the last one. And it could very well be the longest one. Because even though I agree with the boys, I do think Maru shines most with Bio. I think we're going to see Mech at least once, if not twice. Yeah. I would not mind that. I will be here to carry you home if that happens, Kev. <laughs> we are loaded in to Moonlight Madness to kick off the final round of 16 match here for the World Championship Series Global Finals. In the bottom left position, spawning as the Blue Terran from Jinner Green Wings, he is Maru. I do agree that if he is at his best, he is absolutely a title contender and he may very well take it all. But he's going to have to start by taking care of his teammate, the Zerg player that's spawning in the right top side of Moonlight Madness. It is, of course, a Rogue. A while ago, Nate, we came to the conclusion that Rogue, he is the grinder. Five out of six top eight finishes in the most prestigious leagues in Korea this year. Like. Uh, that's insane, man. Like five times quarterfinals. That's so good. But of course, it's weird as well to see a player that is that good. And not just in those competitions, even in Pro League as well, which, you know, he brought up himself. It's like, guys, don't just talk about my top eights. In Pro League, I was actually better than every other Zerg out there. You know, I was better than Vio. I was better than Life. So he is extremely good, but he has never made it to the semifinals. Bliskan would be one out of a stage to start with, though. 
Yeah, this is a big opportunity for him to really say, yeah, okay, I had a lot of good performances, but now you guys need to see me win something big. And of course, if you guys think that Rook's got a chance, make sure you keep uh, keep letting us know on on social media. Hashtag WCS balls. Hashtag Rogue if you think Rogue will win, and hashtag Maru if you think Maru will win. I think a lot of Terran Bros out there. Maru's been one of the most fun players yeah. to follow, uh, pretty much since he rose to prominence because he is so good. Some of the best moments that we've seen uh, in the World Championship Series have been at the hands of players like Maru. I think think anyone will forget. They were talking about Jadong earlier, one of the, the epic first-person view video that's got a bajillion views of him splitting all of his forces in the center of Frost a year or two ago. Was uh, He's been a force to be reckoned with yeah. for a while. I mean, even in 2013 already, in WCS in Canada back then, Maru had a ridiculous game against Gear also, uh, against Gear also on Frost. And yeah. It just made people jump up. I mean, Maru You has, can play TVP yeah. like this? Maru has made me stand up in the past while watching his games, you know, how he's splitting individual Marauders to, against Colossus to make sure that only one Marauder takes damage for every Colossus shot. The, the things that he can do if he's absolutely on fire, if he's really in the zone, it's insane. Uh, but, you know, I feel in this series, obviously, Micro is going to be very important. Important, but I think strategy-wise, that might even be more important. Yeah, that's, I think, one of the, the best things about a player like Mara is that he mixes it up enough, mm -hmm. but he he, ha he like kind of creates these moments where you look at like Terran players for inspiration. You don't really look to innovation for inspiration. He's just going to do what everyone tells you you should be doing better than you can. But Maru's going to really make some crazy stuff happen that you're like, I want to do that. I want to be able to play like this and make these moves happen. And so far, it looks like a, a lot of you are leaning towards the side of Maru. Yeah, I am a tiny bit worried, even though I was feeling Maru as well, and I still am. I've watched a couple of games of Maru recently over the last few months, of course. You know, you always catch them, and even when you don't, you want to watch the VODs of this guy. But he has lost a couple of pretty straightforward matches, you know, against Zergs like DRG. And of course, DRG, once upon a time, the absolute best Zerg in the world. But right now, he's not the same as alive. He's not a rogue. He's, he's not dark, you know. So if you lose a very straightforward, fair match against DRG, you could potentially be having a very hard time at BlizzCon going up against the likes of Rogue. Then again, Maru did defeat this very own Rogue 3 to 1 in the GSL quarterfinals a couple months ago. So that is something you can work with, but it was a pretty unique series. A lot of variety in the opening build orders. A crazy game with a big comeback where three Banshees pretty much saved the game after oh, he yeah. lost 57 SCVs. So it wasn't flawless. It, you know, 3 1 sounds convincing, but every game could have pretty much gone the other way as well. Yeah, already we're seeing a very interesting opening out of Maru. This seems like some sort of counter meta play where perhaps he's expecting Rogue uh, to go for some sort of Roach bust, but he opens with a fast tank and medevac. I guess he's going to try to yeah. do the drop in this area, exactly. as, our, as our observer's pointing out. Still, you know, if it weren't for this map, I would say this is a highly unusual build to go for. Mm -hmm. uh, on this map, we've seen it before, though. But if Rogue identifies this in time, he could potentially expand at 3 o'clock, which obviously is quite far away. But it does make sure that he takes absolutely zero damage from this opening. This build also lends itself pretty well. I'm not saying it would 100% happen, but for a mech fault, because he's already got the third gas and yeah. his natural as well. And there's the armory, so I am expecting to see... Uh, some level of that play. I would be surprised if you went into bio out of this. And that first drop, I guess we're going to find out how much a tank can do here. Yep, but it's not a super quick turret hatchery. There are no drones over there just yet, so I don't think it's going to be able to do a whole lot. I think it's in range of the gas, but, you know, it would be annoying to lose that extractor, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah, and I mean, at worst comes to worse. Actually, these queens oh. are in a beautiful position to defend this. I was going to say, worst comes to worse, wouldn't even be terrible to try to drop that tank on the other side of the, the destructible debris, try to sequester off those bases to delay a third hatchery, potentially. Uh, but there he's going for that high ground platform. It's out of the range of most of these forces. That Spinecrawler is going to try to uh, have something to say, though. Uh, there are a couple of queens around, and they should be able to transfuse it at least for a little bit as soon as you take care of the Marines, and it's just that tank and eventually you should be able to take care of it. Queens with an Overlord should provide high ground vision as well. This thing's going to yep. be forced to relocate, at least for a little bit. And I think so far, so good for Rogue. He's really not taking any damage against this. Nope. Uh, Depot for Maru does see these rocks on the right side, so getting ready. Oh, but the medevac. medevac gets killed, which means no retreat for this tank. I would so. leave this tank there. Just let it there for the rest of the game. That supply, Nate. Yeah. <laughs> three, that three supply, you'll never get back. He has actually supply blocks, so... <laughs> it's like, kill it! I need to build units. Uh, new medevac does arrive. 
Is that team gonna get a second tank and a couple of SCVs yeah. as well? Maybe a turret. Yo, these are SCVs, man. Yeah, man. The cavalry's here. <laughs> it's gonna keep these tanks alive against a few mutilis. Of course, you need more than just five or six mutilis to engage into a bunch of uh, missile turrets. But these rocks, these marines didn't have enough DPS to actually save the rocks for now. And this is very annoying for Maru because he doesn't have a whole lot of units. No, I love this that he splits links off between both bases. He forces SCVs to get pulled here. He this prevents him from being able to move forces to his main. The thing is, even though he's going into Mutalisk, the lack of any Hellions is actually a really big problem. And then let's not forget, Maru is busy dealing with these Zerglings right now. He's not building turrets. Exactly, there are no turrets. He does have one tour. He lost the tech lab, by the way, so he's gonna have to renew the tech lab if he wants to build more tours. I think this is a very successful run by. Yeah, I do like this though, because these tanks are still an issue, and they're keeping the Mutalisks held back for a little bit, and now that he sees there's Mutas, even if they dive in on these siege tanks and kill them, it also Pick tells it him, hey, build missile turrets back home now. He's, He's got a thousand minerals. He, he should have missile turrets on him. Mm -hmm. He tried to uh, save the tank, but he Wait. Uh, it's just a little bit too late. Maru, he has, uh, he's just starting his third command center. I've actually yeah. just realized that. And he's so just this is... additional barracks now as well, but Stim is going to be so late. Holy hell. He's actually going to go bio out of this. Yeah. I well, mean, that's going to be like a 14 minute Stim timing. Yeah. Um, I think he's in so much trouble. I don't really know what he's doing. This is pretty crazy. I was like, I can see how you could kind of like slowly transition into mech out of this, but his third command center is going to get cancelled? What is going on in this game? Well, he does cancel it, so he doesn't lose all the minerals, but does end up losing 100 minerals, and of course it's going to be quite a bit delayed. There's <laughs> still that SCV yeah, there I as well. Yeah, I want him to just build a sensor that, tower there, That's man. a prisoner of war if I've ever seen one in a game stuck. of StarCraft 2. He's actually stuck. Well, actually, maybe maybe he lets the, let it kill the turret and run away. Yeah, yeah. that overload would have been nice. <laughs> so drilling claws are on the way. He's actually getting a... Plus one attack now, his second engineering bay. But these rocks were open too, so that's also a problem. You know, that missile turret helps us quite a bit. He's going to repair oh, the, the door, door with all the SCVs, but it's not going to be enough. The door does fall. It's a very expensive pickoff. I mean, look at the supply of Maru. He's working with 14 army supply it, right now, He's getting spanked right now, Roddy. Yeah. This is uh, this is not how I put this series to start, but Maru did such a weird build, and such a weird follow-up. Uh, really seemed like he had it laid out where he would have, oh, he was already prepared to deal with the mutas, but he just didn't expect him to flood links through the rocks. Yep, uh, I think a single Hellion would have already helped so much. Just having one Hellion shoot at a couple of those links from across the destructible debris would have helped. Three, four Marines was just not enough to scare those links away. There were over 20 links working on that debris. Uh, just three Marines have no DPS. Very good move by Rogue, and Army Supply tells the tale of this game right now. And 72 Kev. against 18. You said it, Kev. 15, 14 minute stim. He's, he does, he's, this is not enough to defend against this Roach follow-up. He's just going to walk over the, walk across the map, smack him across the face and kill him. I would love to call this a timing, Nate, but it's not a timing. Oh, as um, exploding a very particular window after <laughs> already killing most of everything that he has. The Roaches sure. show up and that's that should be it for game number one. I don't see how he's supposed to magically kill a bunch of Roaches. Wow. GG Rogue takes an early lead in this best of five. And this is where all the hipster Zerg fans around the world say, I have no idea why everybody thinks Maru is going to win this series. Can I, can Rogue I was clearly again, the favorite. Rogue, but, but Maru <laughs> just pulled a dream, though. Like, he just did this build that I guess you can see, like, you can be like, well, hey, there's a platform where you can put a tank and links can't yeah. hit it. Does that mean that you should put go to the platform and put tanks there? If he gets the SCV on the other side of the tanks and maybe he kills a few more mutas for free, maybe. But you invest so much... And honestly, he got nothing out of this tank play. I mean, I think this build from Maru is also a lot better against the three hatch opening, right? Yeah, and for sure. Like late spire. Yeah, two base, I mean, you know, two yeah, base fire is pretty much the I'll, answer I'll give to him this. credit. You know, obviously, I wouldn't say I'm better than Maru, but I guess, I, hope two, not, Nate. I guess a two base spire, you know, fast siege tanks were never really a strong build. Because I would pull you off the desk if you'd say so. Yeah. I, I pull myself off the desk. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> Either way, that's a, that's a fantastic way for Rogue to start his series, and not the long game that I expected. Uh, of course, you know, just a couple of arrows and perhaps the wrong build for Maru. We'll see if game number two brings something that we kind of expected. It's going to be played on Iron Fortress, I think a map that both these guys have played a lot on. Uh, I've seen Rogue multiple times on this map, and I do think this is a map he feels very comfortable with. Yeah, uh, you know, this is one of those maps where if you get cross spawn as Zerg, you've got to be happy playing versus Terran. It's so hard to rally across the map. We've seen it time and time again. There's a reason the Zerg logo's in the center of the map. We make that joke every cast, but it's true. If you get cross spawn versus Zerg and they spread creep, don't do anything too cheesy. 
it's actually quite difficult uh, unless you can get some really early damage and gain momentum. Now, Rogue is also the type of Zerg that does sometimes do weird openings, where you know where he opens up with a 13 or 14 pool, just hoping that he's playing against the CC first on the low ground. And the previous game, Maru did go CC first, but I've also seen Rogue try to do that against a person that just opened up with a barracks on top of his ramp, and then that person's like, well, cool, I'm four workers ahead right now, and your hatchery is extremely late. You just put yourself in a pretty dicey position. Yeah, we're setting ourselves up for a pretty interesting uh, top eight, especially if our Zerg player manages to take this game somehow. But will it be evened out by this guy, our Blue Terran in the Northeast from Jinair Green Wings? He's Maru. Well, Zerg, the most underrepresented race at BlizzCon, but so far the Zergs that we have seen, they've done very well. Of course, Bjorn, you know, Bjorn got his ass kicked a little bit by Classic, but life was flawless, and we saw it in the previous series as well, Hydra pulling the upset. Yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome so far. Can this guy bring the Zergs back here in the top eight? Of course, he is Junior Greenwing's Rogue. Spawning in the left bottom side of Iron Fortress, so we do have... I like that you brought up the races too, Roddy. We have two Protoss guaranteed in semifinals now. Mm -hmm. This is a part where I asked for a balance patch for Heart of the Swarm before it's over. Two Protoss? Three. We have Classic, Hero, and Rain. Yeah, I just mean guaranteed. Oh, semifinals. Yeah, or semis. Because of the PvPs. Okay. Oh, yeah. And if a yeah. Zerg wins... I'm a Terran, Kev. I can find a way to whine about anything. You're whining ahead of the situation, Nate. That's very impressive. The quarterfinals aren't even played <laughs> that, and Nate is already upset. <laughs> it is going to be CC first on the low ground, so Rogue probably thinking, like, man, this is one of those moments yeah. where I should have gone for my cheeky early pulls. So he's definitely not afraid to bust out, no matter what's on the line. Yeah, I already think that this, uh, this drone just being out here, it's always annoying, because yeah. you want to pull your SCV away, then the drone can regenerate health, so if you just tag the SCV on it, eventually you can like kite you around to a weird point where the drone can actually kill both SCVs and then you just kind of, you know, just F10, rage quit. Mm -hmm. Obviously you don't want to do that here when you're competing for, you know, a shot at BlizzCon. Yep, and of course this one SCV could have been mining all along, but it's not. Of course, yeah. you know, Rogue also lost mining time by sending his drone across the map, but at least he knows what he's up against. While Maru, he probably expects, you know, hatch first, followed up by a pool, but if you're not sure, it's always a little scary. Yeah, that's uh, another very important thing, of course, his attention is going to be focused on this. I like how in the last year, I've actually seen so many more Terran players do this, because no one really did it the first couple of years of StarCraft, is the Command Center first, then Gas, then Barracks. You get a really fast factory follow-up to your Command Center first, and if your opponent doesn't go pool first, it's actually just better than the regular Command Center first, then Barracks, then Gas. As a super nerdy Terran notebook, I always wonder, I'm like, man, you only have one Marine if you go for this opening before your factory's out. It's uh, very scary versus early attacks. Only if there's nothing to worry about, one Marine is enough. Yeah. As, uh, that factory goes down, and it's indeed a very quick factory. I mean, a little bit past the four minute mark, including having a second CC already. Just to put things in perspective, when Terran tries to go for the quickest factory against Protoss, it's like 3.05. Yeah, so if this you factory go is, gas first with yeah. no expand, it's this is actually still reasonably close. Yeah, this is just a minute later. Yeah. And the difference is if your opponent runs six links past your bunker, having <laughs> one Marine versus two can make all the difference in actually not dying to early aggression. Of course, keep the tweets coming, hashtag WCS, and vote for your player. Who do you guys think at home is going to take this series? This guy's like, what, man? <laughs> do people still believe that Maru is going to bring it back, or does it start swinging in favor of Rogue? Of course, hashtag Rogue, hashtag Maru. And even this particular spot right wow. here is already tricky, because if all four lings dive on that Marine at once, like he's going to kill this SCV, but there's only one Marine. So it's actually quite quite possible that he's even going to prevent this factory from landing for a little bit. All these extra SCVs have to get pulled wow. off the line. Yeah, this is really not nice for Maru. That's this, a, there's this a lot of mining time being lost in a very crucial phase in the game. Pretty much what I was trying to get at. Like, it's not like, of course, he's going to win the game off it, but the few SCV kills because of that, uh, you know, at what point would you have rather just delayed your factory by 20 seconds and gotten another Marine? Yeah, two SCVs dead and four or five not mining for 20, 30 seconds. So just four links and, of course, the perfect scout. Pretty much everything that Rogue could possibly wish for. Didn't have to sacrifice an Overlord. Yep. I think it's very good. And this link, this is actually so annoying. When your units are slower than the unit that's running around in your main base. And now the Hellions come over, but... And he's already seen everything that you would need to see at this point in the game. The only thing that Rogue would have to be possibly unsure about is whether there's an Armory follow-up with mm -hmm. a Banshee. But with both Overlords available and a low Marine count, it's very possible that he just throws that in there. And he just goes straight for the Medivac behind it, realizing that he doesn't want, you know, just show up with a Banshee in front of three, four Spores. Maru does still love his Banshees in this matchup. You see it very frequently in his games. And he's made a couple of remarkable comebacks, like we mentioned earlier, after uh, back off those Banshees. You know, just 
opening up with a couple Hellions, following up with Benji's. Even late game, he still throws would, them in. I would love to see Rogue do something crazy here, just because I still think that Maru in a regular sort of macro game has that slight edge. With a Lair and the Roachhorn coming in, if you think your opponent's going for a Cloak, Banshee, Hellion, how fast those Nidus builds can actually be super strong, because Banshees will have a really hard time with Overseer on like four or five Queens, and then the Roaches will kill everything else, but uh, that's me a little bit wishful thinking. But, it, but it's hard to pull such things off, though, because yeah. the moment it doesn't work at first, you know, every second that goes by is very good for Terran if the Banshee comes yeah, close to yeah. hide. And it's just one of those options yeah. where if you know that they're not opening up with, like, tanks or bio, nine it actually can work. Nine roaches, Nate. That's quite a few roaches. So maybe you're onto something. Because I kind of wonder, you don't make nine roaches just to defend against a couple of Hellions unless you're expecting a double factory, including blue flame or something. But... So we'll see where he goes with this. It's a lot of roaches to start off with. Yeah, seeing, seeing that yeah, tech there we lag. go. Okay, well, yep. there you go. I do, I do know something about this game. I, <laughs> I mean, we've seen it before. There are two overlords around the main base of Maru. That's something that's very important to mention. It would be amazing for Maru for this medevac to spot that Nidus network. And it, no, oh, oh my god, he got so close. Maybe the Hellions can still swing yeah. towards the north. He does spot the roaches already. Okay, he's okay. gonna see it. Seeing the Nidus is the most important thing because yes. spotting roaches doesn't actually tell you enough because he might have built the roaches in the preparation for a Hellbat push. Yeah. Yep. Which is coming, by the way. It's here. <laughs> I mean, he doesn't see any drones over here. He picks up the queen. He's going to have a bench over here as well. He's going to be able to see everything. This bench, it's most likely that... Uh, There's the Nidus in, the in the bottom right of the main. Yeah. He should probably bring this bench home, oh, ASAP. He sees it, though. Maru could see it. React. Maru. Yes. SCVs are yes, coming. That's really big for Maru. With the Maru. Banshee. But this one actually should possibly be able to yeah. unload. It's going to kill him. Banshee's a high DPS name. Oh, Transuse, he's got it. Oh, boy. Back into my back into my void games, man. This this is the worst thing that could possibly. I, I think Rogue actually is a. He could probably go straight up 2-0 now in this series. How, like, many, how many units is He has the Overseer. Oh, There's God. nothing that can kill the Overseer, which means the Banshees can't attack with the Queens here. But he's going to lose all of his drones back home. Yeah. Actually, Rogue doesn't have any economy. Put your drones in the Nidus. He's bringing a couple links back from the Nidus. Okay, that's something. You know, but, all the production is gone. Like, three command centers is nice, but if you kill a Terran production. There's nothing they can do. Wow. Um, just don't fly your overseer into those widow mines so that the such, banshees can't just kill everything. Such a good move by Rogue to unload the queens at first. That's of course something you always want to do, but not something we always yeah. see. The queens popped out and he immediately started French queuing. That widow mine did more bad than uh, good. Just ki yeah, tanked it on all of those SCVs, and now we just, and, you know, roaches are gonna roaches are gonna have a field day with this. There's no there's no easy way to put it. I mean, the Banshees can come up. He just needs to make sure that he uses the Queens to pick them off with the Overseer. He has the detection. He He's got a, everything he needs. He had a bunker there, but he had absolutely zero bio units left. Oh. All of the SCVs have gone down, and a single Banshee should not be enough against these four Queens. Rogue is about to go up 2-0, 12 minutes into game number two, and a very short game number one as well. Yeah, this is over. Yeah, he's got one Thor on the way. Thor's... They were, never, they were never that good, actually, you know? <laughs> I like Thor, but they were never good enough to kill 20 roaches and 10 queens that inside your base. <laughs> Maru probably in a disbelief, just like many Maybe of us. Maybe if if Tychus was in it. If it was the Odin with the AoE attack, then I might believe, but wow. not today. Rogue! Um, wow, he, he just... He's actually showing up in a weird way. I... I uh, it's funny because it's the tiny things that I honestly don't think people notice that much. Like going for the one Marine. By going gas before barracks off a of command center first, you only have one Marine. Those Zerglings get in there. They're a little bit more mm -hmm. of a pain. That Zergling finishes speed while it's in your base and sees that you started a tech lab on your barracks next to your starport. And your opponent makes a build order decision based on a very slight build order choice that you made at the start of the game. And that costs you. It's... It's weird, but I that's one of the reasons why two Marines before factory off a of command center first without going gas before barracks is so popular. Right. Those links actually just brutalize him in I the mean, first two minutes. Uh, the first Benchy did go across the map. Obviously, if he has that Benchy at home, there will never be a I Nidus. I mean, if he just sees the Nidus, right? Yeah. If you see the Nidus ahead of time, obviously, it's a, it's a big play, but... But, uh, I mean, I, I felt that Rogue had so many units that if Maru wouldn't have done the economic damage that he did, even if that Nidus goes down outside of the natural, it's still going to be very, hold, uh, very hard for Maru to yeah, hold I that. I agree. I agree. He yeah. didn't have any tech labs on those factories except for after the fact. So all he could build were Hellions and Banshees. The Queen, four or five Queens with the Overseer. Wow. As long as that Overseer doesn't die, you're in a great spot. And Maru's showing frustration. Yep. He does not look comfortable at all there, right now. There's no, there's no spinning this, you know, into some fairy tale story. This is a big upset. If Rogue 3 owes Maru, some yes. people will be like, okay, I follow Rogue for a while. I know he can beat Maru. Yes. But even those people wouldn't say 3 0. 
I agree. The next map is going to be played on Coda. That's the game where Maru had a remarkable comeback last time he played against Rogue. And he's going to have to start his entire comeback over here this time. And, and for Rogue, I feel this is absolutely amazing, Nate, because he hasn't even really shown all that much. You know, what did he show in game number one? Yeah, I made a bunch of links and I broke down the debris, and I pretty much won the game off that. Of course, he opened two base fire, but, you know, that's about it. And then game number two, just a Nidus play, you know, that doesn't really help you going into Coda. No, I, I have to say, this series has really blown me away. I, I don't really have any more words for it. You know, we've seen weird builds left and right, tried to go a little bit more standard last game, but I, I have no idea what he's going to do here on Coda on this map. He's, he needs to win three maps in a row or his BlizzCon dreams are dead. On the right side of the map, from Green Greenwings, he's Maru. Looks frustrated and if you're down 0-2, Nate, with tournament life on the line, do you still go for the build that you may, maybe perhaps oh. wanted to go for, like CC first on the low ground? If you're down 0-2 against this man, that is not afraid to switch it up, that is not afraid to play a little risky. It is Rogue, his teammate. Yeah, I mean, if you... So just thinking about the way that I would have analyzed this or talked about this on the couch, you have a guy who's favored, right? Maru is the person that most people are going to look at. You say to yourself, well, Rogue should do something a little bit crazy because like we discussed with like Zest versus Innovation, mm -hmm. trying to straight up play the guy that's better than you doesn't usually work. But Maru in game number one, Gives him a little bit of the freebie with the super weird tank drop build that just doesn't work versus a very standard two base meter that lots of Zerg players do. So that game's kind of like a, okay, that's a bit of a gimme there. It's a weird one. Then the next game, Rogue does exactly what we kind of think yeah. he should do, and it works off really well because Maru just plays a little too greedy. And that, that little bit of information that he gets by having only one Marine, he can't kill the four Zerglings, it's... It just kind of like snowballs into this really awkward scenario where I still think if Maru can force a long macro game where he can show off his micro skills, he should still be favored. But now you have to throw in the you know the possible you know the, the tilt in there. And let's not forget that for now uh, Rogue as well, he can take a lot of risks in his play. Yeah, he, he, can he can do can whatever be, he wants. He can be a little extra greedy. He's up 2-0. He can call a couple corners here and there. And if he just gets rewarded for one of them, that could very well be the end. It basically comes down to maybe him opening up very economic this time, shutting down one attack from Maru, and then he's in a phenomenal position. Yeah, so I, I mean, the way I look at it is, Maru, there's really no room to take any big risks anymore. Mm -hmm. if, if Maru wants to win the next three games, he's got to he's got to reset things, because if he cheeses out this win, it's kind of a reset, but then he still needs to win two more, and he's not going to be able to win this series off the back of cheese. So, I think if you're Rogue, I love that he's opened up with gas, because this gives him the choice now to do like a sort of lifestyle, where if he sees weakness or smells the, the, the greed, which Maru should be doing, then he can punish it really quickly. And for Maru, this is just a scary spot to yeah, be in, because Rogue, anything is possible from Rogue. And everything is scary right now when you're down 0-2. You saw him even hesitate a little bit. Should I send this Reaper across the map, you know? What if yeah. he opened up with an early pool? What if three uh, or six links snuck across the map and someone started working on my SCV? Still a lot of people having faith in Maru. Well, Nate, if I, I could think, change uh... my vote right now, I'd probably vote for Rogue. Yeah, this is, you know, he, he just has that advantage now. You got to imagine, he's already in his head. And this Reaper, you know, not really able to do too much. Of course, losing this, I mean, that's uh, that's, that'll be like the straw that breaks the camel's back. Uh, you have such a terrible start to the series, and then all of a sudden your map presence is gone. But there's the factory, still just one gas from what I can tell. No third command center as of yet, but still pretty likely if he doesn't take that second gas. Yeah, Rogue only has a single drone on gas now, so it's unlikely he's going to do anything super crazy with it. Not a CC going down for Maru. Um, he has done multiple versions of this over the last few months. Sometimes he even just go Marine, Marine, and then a double CC, you know, an old school TVP opening. He doesn't really do that too often. This is a little bit more of a standard play. And this is him saying exactly what you were wishing for, Nate. I want to make it to a certain stage in the game where I can work with a lot of bio units, and, and then my micro should make the difference. I felt like this is sort of along the lines of what Dream needed to do, but much like in Dream series, you know, and I wouldn't be surprised if Rogue did something, you know, similar to the effect of what Hydra did in the final game of that series, which is now you want to slow things down and play a regular macro game? Now yeah. you want to stop doing weird stuff? 
well, sorry. This, you know, now I know you're vulnerable. Oh. Now I know you're weak. Roach and a Roach Warren. Yeah, he has done the Roach Bane before. You know that game that we keep mentioning where Maru had that crazy comeback with all those banshees. Rogue opened up with Roach Bane on this map. He went up to three bases. He sold it as, you know, a, a normal game. And then suddenly he ran across the map with Roaches and Banes and killed 57 SCVs. Somehow, some way, didn't win because Maru had three banshees and they killed everything well, on the other side of the map. No banshees this game. Exactly. Third Command center is almost done. Oh, Stim is yeah. on the way. Now, I will say, if he keeps his Hellions and his Reaper as poking as much as possible, if you see the Roaches leave the Zerg's base, usually if it's Roach Bane, they start the Baneling Nest when the Roaches leave. So if you throw down bunkers at that point in time, Six. you will have a defense that can defend against this. So it really comes down to Maru keeping the pressure up, but also, you know, not over committing to defense because it is a lair. It's not yep. a Baneling Nest follow up. Nope. And a second gas going down as well. Reaper's going to hop into the main base. He will spot this lair. Yeah, it's it's a great it's a great scout to see that lair because now he knows that it shouldn't be it shouldn't be like a baneling nest like no there's almost no one crazy enough to cancel a lair and then do some all in so this tells him okay my double eBay it should be totally fine take my gas guys just finish my he's wall he's making a lot of roaches donate I mean you're not supposed to knight us against a guy that's opening up with multiple rexes uh, no but why is he making so many roaches. I think, uh, what has he seen inside of Maru's base is probably the most important question now. If he's not sure, so this could still have been, he doesn't see the gases yeah. in the main either. He could still think this is Roach, or he could still think that it's a Banshee play. He's making nothing but Roaches. I don't like this. Like, the thing is, with uh, with the way that Bio works, and the fact that he went for three barracks, actually, as he yeah. got his Ebays, he didn't go for the Ebays, get his upgrades, and then start the barracks. He got his barracks very early relative to a normal greedy play. Mm -hmm. So. A Roach speed push, as nice as it is, it's not one of those crazy committed ones that I think had more success because of things like upgrades that Violet you would do in WCS, um, but also um, players like Revival actually had a lot of success with these against greedy Terrans. I don't think it's going to be that easy to do with just Roach speed. And if you guys are wondering why we're making such a big deal out of this, just look at the work account. Rogue, he was up 12 workers. Right now he's down 6 workers because he's been producing nothing but Roaches. He's been hiding them though, so this is basically just an absolute massive Roach shove that Maru is still a little unaware of. Like, he doesn't know that this is happening. Yeah, I think the most important things to note though is the Starport is done. So what, you really, what he really needs is two Medivacs and... You know, uh, his 1-1 one, one to finish up. I think, honestly, two medevacs in his 1-1, one, one, he, uh, he he can't really lose. These units have to stand behind the wall, though. Like, if they fight here yeah, on the low without ground, the medevacs. I mean, he already stimmed once on these marines yep. to kill that overseer. Oh, like, God. this is actually one of the few ways Maru could lose this game. Oh, because the road speed's done. He's going to oh. have to stim again. He's going to go for a defensive stim. This time, he's pulling all the SCPs to repair the bunker. Really? Oh, my goodness. He breaks the bunker down, and he just runs right in. Maru caught in the worst humanly possible position of this game could be eliminated from having a chance at playing at BlizzCon off the back of running out of his base after stimming to kill an Overseer. The Roaches are killing all of the SCVs from the Natural, all the SCVs from the Main, 34 dead, 122 supply to 43. Even with three command centers, Maru has such a task ahead of him to bring this game back. Mules are going to drop at the third base. Oh Bio is God. still strong, but he's lost so much. He has two Marauders, Nate. He has two Marauders. Marauders are the units that kill Roaches, not the Marines. He still has a couple of those, but he's losing everything. It's 125 supply against 43. I... Maru just being completely unaware of the huge amount of Roaches that Rogue was saving up on the other side of the map. That has to be, it has to be, he has to have gotten in his head. He steps outside of his base with injured units, not knowing where the enemy forces are without medevacs. There's no way for those Marines to escape without stimming. Yep. Now he loads up possibly to go for a counterattack, but I mean, the only reason why he doesn't leave the game is because... He has three CCs. Yeah, Roach, <laughs> Roaches scale terribly against Bio once upgrades come into play. So he says, okay, well, you probably don't have a Bailey Nest, probably don't have any upgrades, so... If I don't die, if I can start putting pressure on you, I can keep myself safe at home. Do you think it's wise for Rogue to go all the way back with all his units? I think at this point, the only way Rogue loses this game is if Maru gets drops in on him. Yeah, Rogue did fantastic there. The only thing he could have done is split up two, three Roaches and send them towards that third Orbital Command, where all the Mews were being dropped. So during all of that, despite the fact that so many SCVs were pulled and even more SCVs died, he, uh, Maru was mining through all of this. And I'm not saying this is looking good for Maru, because yeah. that's not the case at all. But these three Roaches, if they would have been there all along, Maru would have been broke as a joke right now. In, in, in my opinion, the most, the biggest thing about this isn't necessarily that his 
you know, the Roaches weren't going to do damage. Because they should have done a lot of damage, regardless of where those forces were positioned. It's just the fact that he killed half the Marines before he <laughs> even pulled his SCVs to repair the bunker. He doesn't have that bunker to soak up damage. And now, Maru, he has such a such a hill to climb because these Roaches are no longer... You, they're not necessary anymore. Like, he's done enough damage that he can switch into Ling Bane unit with a slight upgrade disadvantage, which he's about to even up, by the way. And then just win because he has so much more income. Yep, 70 drones against 30 SCVs. These Marines and Marauders are doing very well, though, against a couple of those roaches in the main. But he needs more than just killing a few roaches. He needs to do economic damage, maybe even pick off a couple of those first mutilists that pop. But I just don't see it happen. The Rogue still has more army supply. He's putting himself very defensive right now. Bane speed is about to finish up. I mean, these Marines have done a phenomenal job. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. once he needs those more upgrades, than this. Once those upgrades even out, and I, I think... Uh, Probably should start zergling speed as well with a composition like this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> once those upgrades even out, then it should be a hey, lot easier. He doesn't have zergling speed yet. I don't yeah, think he realizes this. Yeah, I was, I was just saying. I'm like, I, I think that might be useful. <laughs> it looks like a campaign mission, yeah, right? I it's mean, like, oh, random links just show up. Yeah, like a <laughs> couple like, slow links, like hop, hop, hop. It's like, no, actually, with speed, they are a lot more effective. A couple banelings rolled in, but you really need workers uh, yeah. for banelings to be effective at killing workers. <laughs> Sorry, Rogue, you're too good at this game. You've already killed them all. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you can just play after the victory command, I guess, if you really want to. Mm -hmm. um, but now that the Mutalisks are coming out, this is where the, the problem really starts to show itself, is that as scrappy as this is, he doesn't have the income that he needs to throw up missile turrets everywhere. His Marines, maybe they can do it by themselves. Sure, uh -huh. but the Marines have to be where the Mutalisks are for that to work. Uh, this is a great interception as well, because Maru's army is still so small, so losing three Marines, losing four Marauders in a man of act, that is very big. The who, supplies. Who would have thought that this match would look like this? Not like, me. And there are very few people out there, Nate, this, that did. The, the scary thing is, like, there's there's still, like, that weird feeling that makes you not want to say that Maru's done for because he is such a remarkable player. But I would really, this would be, like, one of the best achievements he's had if he could pull this game back. This is because I think Rogue's done the smartest thing possible, which is he's moved away from the cost ineffective composition. And this is what I was talking about. Yep. He doesn't have the resources to build units and static defense. Yep, and the Marines are out of position. A couple of Banelings again rolling towards that third base. Good reaction there by Maru, though. Pulls away all the SCVs, but he Maru. still lost plenty of SCVs in the main base. He loads up a Doom Drop towards the main oh, base. The meta this, this is it. This is all he can do. Huh. And once he lands in here, I don't know. I guess all the Mutalisks are across the map, yeah. so he needs to kill everything in the main base, and then maybe he'll be close to somewhat bringing it close to even, but not really. There are still 18 Banelings on the map, and they are start rolling in over here. Marauders, of course, are going to try to do their best to soak them up. Maru's very good at folks firing, but 18 Banelings, that's just a little too much, and these, the, these Mutas wrecked yeah, everything. The, the problem is, in any game, even in a normal game, if it was even, if Mutas get on top of the production, you're in a heap of trouble, but right now, the, he, the Marines are actually just dying as they come out, and he doesn't have any production anywhere else. Regardless, Maru is getting a lot of damage done, but if his barracks die, it doesn't matter. Nope, every unit he loses right now is a unit that he can't reproduce, and he's starting to run out of units real yeah. quick. Down a couple GG of GG Rogue! 3 0s Maru! What? I don't know, Nate. I really don't know. I'm, I'm surprised. I think everyone is surprised. Of course, I'm, there were people that believed I, in this man, because five times quarterfinals is impressive. He's been a beast in Pro League, but still, I did not see this coming. Like Jeff says, on this stage, it's often a different ball game. Oh, I'm speechless. Yeah, I, I, I'm speechless, to be perfectly honest. Maru is just not the guy that you expect that to happen to. There were... It was, I can kind of see how you might make a one or two slip-ups at the mm -hmm. end when you're down 0-2. You, you're kind of like, you know, you're kind of feeling that pressure. But it's just it's just not what you expect from Maru. The first game build order, everything just, just fell apart. No, I totally agree, Nate. But of course, congratulations to Rogue. And he's standing next to William Chobra Cho. A team kill to wrap up the day, and both players had to take everything from the inside and throw it all away. But it is Rogue who comes out successful in the very last match. Now, I want to start with the history between you two. Obviously, teammates, and you guys talked about it in the interview. You had lost to Maru in the GSL, and Maru was like, well, it's, it's just going to happen again. You came out swinging. I mean, how does it feel? Is it a little bit more satisfying knowing that you were able to overcome that? 저희가 이번 이제 경기 전 인터뷰에서 양 선수 다 이제 예전에 만난 적도 있고 또 GSL에서는 이제 이병렬 선수가 이제 패배했던 적이 계시잖아요. 그것 때문에 오히려 이번 경기에 좀더 
뭔가 더 충실히 하셨나요? 아니면 뭔가 좀더 그것 때문에 그 자극을 받아서 더 준비를 하셨었나요? 어 그때는 제가 어, 뭔가 성주한테 자신이 없어가지고 소극적인 플레이를 했었던 것 같은데 그래서 이번에는 어, 무조건 이길 수 있다고 생각하고 하, 했는데 뭐잘 됐던 것 같아요. Uh, back then when I lost, I went in being just, I had no confidence against Maru. I was very scared of Maru, but t- today it was different. I came in knowing that I had a chance to win, and therefore nothing was holding me back, and I think that's why I was able to play really well. And we, we got to talk about that game too. Of course, the 8 out of, t- eight out of 10 TLOs with the Nidus. Uh, you pulled it off, and you were able to clinch that victory. I, I mean, things like that, it's, it's a little scary to pull off, I feel, when you're a pro. Does it scare you at all, or was that something you felt that in the moment you were like, I just have to commit, and this is how I'm going to win, and that's going to give me the momentum? 그럼 저희 이번 이 경기 때는 또 나이더스 커넬로 좀 이렇게 재밌는 경기를 보여주셨는데 그런 전략이 솔직히 프로로서 좀 두려울 수도 있을 것 같아요. 왜냐하면 흔한 전략이 아니기 때문에 실패를 하면 오히려 더 자신감이 떨어질 수도 있고 그런 자극을 받을 수 있는데 그 전략을 뭐 예전 그러니까 처음부터 써야겠다 생각을 하고 준비를 하셨나요? 어. 전략 이 땅굴망은 어, 이번에 딱맵 방금 맵을 정하고 난 후에 어, 서로 스타일을 잘 알고 있어서 메카닉을 할 거라고 생각해가지고 딱 즉흥적으로 생각해냈어요. Uh, no, I, I didn't prepare it at all. In fact, uh, it was just kind of a spontaneous decision when I saw the map. Well, I was like, all right, he's probably going to go mech, so I'm just I'm just going to shut it down. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for the Nidus and I'm going to win. And we did see it work out. Well. Most people said that Maru was going to be the favorite in this match. Most people said that Maru had a chance at winning this BlizzCon, but you've shut him down. Every player comes in saying, I want to win this BlizzCon. You know, maybe it's my first time, maybe it's my second time, third time. You know, what's your goal? How important is it to be able to win the last Heart of the Swarm BlizzCon tournament? Then, now, the majority of people are the best player of Jojongju. They can win the best player of Jojongju. They can win the best 그런 얘기를 하고 있었는데 이제 16강에서 이기셨잖아요. 조성준 선수 상대로. 그러면 대부분 선수는 또다뭐 예전에도 블리즈컨에 왔었고 아니 이번이 처음이기 때문에 꼭 이기 우승하고 싶다. 그런 얘기를 하고 계신데 이게 군단의 심장의 마지막 블리즈컨 대회인 만큼 정말 꼭더 이기고 싶구나. 더큰 의미가 있는 대회라고 생각하세요? 네, 이번에 어, 군단의 심장 때 제가 어, 엄청 많이 노력을 했고 어, 성과를 개인 리그 성과를 내지를 못해 가서 이번에 생, 되게 욕심내고 있어요. Well, I, you know, I, I really want to leave a good mark in Heart of the Swarm, and I think, you know, this is the way to do it. I want to do my best. I think I've been trying very hard and I'm making some progress in Heart of the Swarm for my career, and to win BlizzCon would really be the best final chapter I could write for Heart of the Swarm for myself. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Rogue defeats Maru to move on to the round of eight. Thank you very much, Chobe. We're back on the couch once again with my dear friends. We've got our top eight that will be playing at BlizzCon in the next couple of days, just a couple of days away as we get closer and closer to finding who will be the world champion of 2015. TLO in control and Todd, here are the eight players that have gone through. Eight fantastic players, we've got three mirror matchups surprisingly. Todd? Yeah, one single turn that's actually going to win the whole thing. How interesting is that? Uh, but no, more seriously, in particular that He's innovation so versus life matchup at the top, is the one I'm probably going to be the most excited about. Three mirrors is actually pretty surprising. I think if we looked at the bracket, we maybe expected quite a few products to, to do well and to meet each other, but two PvP and one ZVZ, I don't think too many people would have predicted that in particular. And that's why we all did terrible with the predictions. Innovation <laughs> to win it all. I think he remains the favorite. Um, I, I especially think so against Life, who we didn't really get to see his form. So yeah. maybe Life is in that, in that contending, uh, contending form. Uh, or maybe he's not. Maybe maybe yep. innovation has a fairly easy round of eight. We'll have to see. Well, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's take a closer look at that series that we just saw in three zero. I mean, really nobody did predict Who that. Who would have guessed? Apart from <laughs> Chobra. Chobra. Um, <laughs> funny enough, but here is the window ten. Windows ten. Excuse me. Uh, game DVR. Tilo. How did he 3-0 Maru? Well, I mean, in the first game, I really didn't like what Maru is going for that. Build seems nice on paper on uh, Moonlight Madness, and it's a map that hasn't been played that much in Korea, so maybe it's, it's because of that. But it's a build that actually doesn't work out quite that well because Fast Fire is very popular. 
game two, Crazy Nidus game. <laughs> I mean, um, Maru was uh, offensive, but didn't see the Nidus, even though he had vision. It's very hard in that situation because you're focused on defending, but there's a Nidus in the corner of your vision. And obviously, Maru has great micro, but in the end, if you don't have units, you can't micro anything. And then we see lots of roaches and queens, and again, a lot of, lot of, lots of roaches. Walk us through this battle, please. Walk us through this battle. Units by Maru, and uh, he manages yeah. to basically barely hold here, but he's gonna lose so many SCVs in the progress that it's almost impossible to come back from. There's, of course, no Muta, so you kind of can make things happen with Medivax, but. Beautiful. In the end, it didn't even matter. Oh, thank oh, God. Oh, that's how you want to end it. That that thank you very Lincoln much for Park. that. Oh, my goodness. 3-0 Maru. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> eliminated here. And not too many people really thought that would be the case. We've got our top eight, as we've already mentioned. Uh, we've had a lot of fun today. As you see, unfortunately, the last moments here of Maru is he's we had, we had a lot of fun, Maru didn't. <laughs> he didn't have a lot of fun. No, no. He, he was actually, well, to be honest, he was upset, obviously. You I know mean, what? It says it's the end of the show. Let's put it this way. Let's put a nice spin on this stuff. You know, these guys, they carried into the biggest tournament of Heart of the Swarm. They're going to yep. spend the next week chillaxing in beautiful Southern California. They're going to Disneyland, attend yeah, BlizzCon. Yeah. Lincoln Park will be there. There's going to be all kinds of great games. And now they can focus on Legacy of the Void because <laughs> this is yeah. their future. And they've got more StarCraft to play. And it's it's... It's a good time to be a gamer right now. It's it is. There's a, there's a lot ahead of us, uh, especially at Blizzard here. But one thing that I have to look at before we go is the predictions. Mm. Because this has been funny. It's Throughout really all the day, about the casters. It was all about us at the end of the day. Yeah. We started off interesting. I mean, look at this. It's actually equal. Yeah. Apart from the bottom four, <laughs> which are still 50%. Unfortunately, Tasteless is still in third with that picture. TLO, that's actually since we got you on the couch, like... Like Todd, I get. You know, he's moved on to Heroes. Day I mean, Nine's building a game. Chobra's Chobra is Chobra. Like, but you, what? How did you get lumped with them? I've I've descended into the top tier of casterhood. Oh, okay. <laughs> top tier of casterhood. So like yeah. the bottom tier in this case. But yeah, I get what you're <laughs> I really like that top three in particular. It's like Jeff, who's stuck on the panel, is doing well with the uh, with the predictions. Skylight, who's going to another game, and then you have Tasteless, who's lost his passion years ago. It's like, what is going no on? No GG like his, though. No it's GG like his. You, when you hear his kind. undulating <laughs> GG cascading over the audience, you know. People Just say passion wait loss, I say passion is set. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of days until we meet up with those. They'll be joining, of course, Tastosis coming over to, to commentate the games. Day 9 will be joining us. Of course, Moonglade and Maynard will be with us. Hosting this very couch. He will which be. Which means Sean will be casting at DreamHack. Get to Reddit. <laughs> start the threads. Right, the best so is coming back once again. Yeah, I'm not sure I quite remember how to do that, but we'll give it a spin, eh? When we get over to Who are you going to cast Blizzcon? with? I'm not sure yet. We'll have to. You actually don't have a pair. It's a, it's Tastosis. Yeah. I guess it's solo cast, right? <laughs> I'm now Sean. Now it's my turn. All right. Well, thank you very much, guys. I uh, hope you've had a lot of fun here at the opening week for StarCraft II and the World Championships is Global Finals. It is not over yet. Make sure to, of course, tweet throughout the week your thoughts and predictions for the upcoming top eight, where we will crown the world champion of 2015. It's just a couple of days. It's just around the corner. We'll see you at BlizzCon.